Welcome to Bernadette's Post, and today I'll be showing how I created these present cakes with edible fabric bows, including bonus winter cakes. For the mocha cake, you will need one and a half cups of flour, one and a half cups of white sugar, three quarters of a cup of cocoa powder, three quarters of a cup of strong coffee, three quarters of a cup of buttermilk, one quarter of a cup of vegetable oil, one and a half teaspoons of baking soda, one teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of salt, two large eggs, and two teaspoons of vanilla. Place all dry ingredients into a large bowl and whisk together. Place all of the wet ingredients into a separate bowl and mix. Combine the wet into the dry ingredients. Place one third of the batter into a grease and line shallow long rectangular cake pan and spread out evenly with a spatula and bake at 350 Fahrenheit for about 15 minutes. Place on a wire rack to cool. Place onto parchment or wax paper once cooled. Cut out one centimeter thick square cake layers. I cut out two centimeter wide squares, five centimeter and seven centimeters. Bake the second cake layer and let that cool, and then continue on cutting out cake layers. I had to end up cutting one layer in half for the one centimeter thickness. For the mocha buttercream icing, you will need one and a half cups of butter, six to seven cups of confectioner's sugar, two tablespoons of instant coffee, two tablespoons of hot chocolate powder, two tablespoons of milk, and a teaspoon of vanilla. Heat the milk in a saucepan and combine with the instant coffee in hot chocolate. Cream the butter in a large bowl with an electric mixer for 5 minutes. Add half of the icing sugar and whisk together. Divide the icing in half and add cocoa powder and half of the vanilla and mocha mix in one of the halves and whisk together for 3 minutes. Adding more confectioner sugar as needed. To the final bowl of icing, add the vanilla and a few drops of marshmallow flavoring, as well as the remaining icing, sugar, and a little milk. And then mix well for three minutes. I layered the cakes into squares with mocha icing in between each layer. Then marshmallow icing on the outer layer using a flat edge of a scraper to sharpen all of the sides. 
I move the cakes with a few long spatulas. For the chocolate wrapping paper, I use two 8 by 11 inch transfer sheets and three bags of white chocolate chips. I also used a ruler, a food safe marker. and a box cutter and a cutting board. The sheets came pre-portioned and I cut out six squares of each size, one tiny box, two medium and one large. I marked off six nine by nine centimeter squares on the second transfer sheet and cut them out. and then melt chocolate in a metal or glass bowl over a saucepan filled with water on low heat. I added chocolate accents to one of the cakes. I dusted the inside corners of a silicone mold with edible luster dust and then melted chocolate and then chilled that and popped out all of the pieces. I had to make about 20 and if you include the bottom you'd probably need to make 24. Place a square transfer sheet shiny side down onto a baking sheet, apply melted chocolate and then set a cake side top on gently. Chill, cut the excess chocolate with a knife and then remove the plastic. Repeat the process until all six sides are covered. But do not scrape the melted chocolate or move the cake once it's set because it moves the entire transfer image. Instead, cut around the cake once the chocolate is cooled. The food marker lines can be scraped off with knife. Add melted chocolate into the corners of one cake. Place the dusted chocolate accent pieces into each corner. Cut out rectangular shapes with two thin long strips with a triangle cut out of one end. Then cut a center strip with all various sizes to make different size bows. To make edible fabric bows you need rice or wafer paper, four tablespoons of water, two tablespoons of powder gelatin, two tablespoons of glycerin, a silicone mat, a pastry brush, edible luster dust, a mason jar, clear flavoring, and sweeteners optional. Bloom the powder gelatin in water and let it sit for about 15 minutes after stirring. Heat up the gelatin for 10 seconds at a time and then skim off the bubbles off the top. And now you add two tablespoons of glycerin and your choice of flavoring. I used marshmallow and you can use a sweetener. I chose not to but then you can heat it up for 10 more seconds. Lay out the wafer paper in batches and paint one side with the DIY eddy fab very quickly and then flip over and start with one edge painting very quickly and creating no bubbles. And then trace around the paper with the blunt edge of a knife. Let set for 10 minutes and then dust both sides with a second pastry brush with luster dust. You can reheat the eddy fab for 10 seconds at a time if it rehardens, and then move the finished fabric to dry for 30 minutes to an hour and then repeat with the remaining paper and then continue on with the luster dust as well. At first the fabric feels a little bit like plastic.
but after letting it sit for a little bit, you can stretch it slightly. To create a bow, wet both ends of the rectangular fabric with eddy fab and then fold over. Then fold over the center accordingly and then dabbing in between the layers to secure. And fold back any major pointy edges with more eddy fab. Wrap the long piece of fabric around the center and secure. Repeat the process until all of the bows are complete. Fold over one end of the ribbon pieces, then secure to underneath of the bow, then onto the cake. Lift the bow with toothpicks if needed. I cut out a donut shape and a bow at the extra mocha cake and I made another batch of marshmallow icing, dyed a third of it green, placed into a piping bag with a three pointed star tip and piped all around the ring. I added a bow of white icing and dusted with gold luster dust and then added gold edible beads to the bow. And then rainbow sprinkles to the wreath. For the winter knit hat cake, I cut out four round layers with each layer gradually smaller, adding an icing layer between each, and crumbled extra cake mixed with icing to create a cake ball, and place that on top. I rounded off the top of the cake and dyed one batch of icing with teal, and then added a layer on top. I went around the edge of the cake with a pointy scraper, and then I added white icing around the bottom edge of the cake and on top of the cake ball with a pointy, large star tip, and then I added shredded coconut around the edge, and on top. I added straight lines of white with dots in between with two rows of medium star tip designs crossing over each other in between. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you'd like to see more of my videos, make sure you click that subscribe button.